Good. I like that. All right. Oh, got it. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Tea Across the Miles with Lady Nancy and Lady Amy. And uh, let's see, today we're doing teas from Herod's. We each have three different ones. <laughs> and mine is like, mine aren't as colorful. Mine come in little black and gold boxes. <laughs> oh, yours are, you know, exclusive. Yeah, yeah, right? Me. Yeah, mm -hmm. very nice. Very and, they, and then you open them up and it's like a little plastic package of loose leaf tea. That is like, I mean, they're like really amazing. nice boxes. And these were on the inside of those like metal book things. I left them in the kitchen. I should have brought them in. <laughs> the packaging is worth like a hundred times more. <laughs> I think like, that's like gotta be where all the price goes. <laughs> oh my gosh. Well, hello. How are you? <laughs> oh, wonderful. <laughs> How are you doing? You doing well. Been, thank you. It's yeah. been a bit of a crazy morning. Uh, just, yeah. Um, only because the computer was uh, cooperating with me. Um, <laughs> an ID10T problem. Um, if you write that down, ID10T it comes out looking like idiot. So it's an idiot problem. <laughs> That's hilarious. <laughs> oh my goodness. But no, I think we've got it all fixed. No, it's just, um, it's spring break. Jackie's home. Yes. So um, her caretaker is here, lovely. And um, she was, she didn't know that I do tea parties and, oh. and tea stuff. And so I made her a pot when she came in this morning. I made her oh, the blend, cool. which is the, uh, vanilla grenadine blend and so Ooh. anyway they're going out because we're getting up to an unseasonably warm 85 degrees today and so they're going to go out now before it gets way too hot to go right. out at all which <laughs> i say is as you're going to reach 90 and i don't even know oh, the, the right yeah i was going to say and it's like i told yeah, yeah i told you that it's a chilly 74 at the moment we it's I will say it's not like it's actually chilly it just feels yeah. good it doesn't feel hot or cold but right right okay. it's so but, funny yeah but my parents are flying in from indiana today oh lovely so, yeah yeah so they'll be here this evening okay. um, yeah so it'll still they'll get to experience some heat i think it's been pretty uh what should i say stupid in indiana <laughs> once see the weather oh i'm sure it's I'm like sure. they've had like wind advisories non-stop like storms but then it gets like cold i mean it's just yeah. not been not been no. so nice no yeah. we had some windy days here too um whatever storms are going through and god bless all those people out there with the tornadoes is terrible oh i know yeah yeah well, yeah and so um my yeah co-worker at the elite at the law office uh he so he has a son who loves loves storms like is super interested he's like a right, teenager right, right. young right. teen but he's also like essentially terrified of them <laughs> so like in reality so it's like loves it but also in reality if it's like like really doesn't really like it so he's not like a storm it's not like the storm chaser love like what right I, right I had. <laughs> but so anyway he showed me a video that they like found online of some somebody taken i think it was probably recently of uh videoing in their garage thing like basically like hey like talking to their son like hey son look here it comes and like looking at, like they're outside with their phone looking at like how the tornado is coming straight for them and then like it starts getting a little windy and so they like go into this like whatever the secured area is within the garage building that they're in but he's still kind of holding his phone out for a while so you can like see stuff like flying around outside and then like it like takes the car like out of the garage because they left the garage door open so they could like video this and like and then finally like you know, the guy like go oh like moves like finally goes inside and then when they come out i mean it just looks like a wasteland it looks crazy it went from like pretty yeah. green trees and everything to just like dead trees and like someone else's vehicle is there in front of their like garage and I have nightmares about tornadoes and stuff like that so that right so I, I, yeah I let's go back to that ID10T problem I mean what is he thinking that's yeah that's it so that was what we called it or I should say yeah it was like that's definitely like this is a rednecks video <laughs> <laughs> oh my 
my gosh. Listen, I'm going to close up the other part of my curtain because I got the sunlight coming sure. in. Give me just yeah, one yeah. second here. No, but no um, yeah, your, your background is lovely. As I said, it, I, I can tell Thank now you. it's Buckingham Palace. But, yeah, um, that's true. Yeah, I should say it's a beautiful day at Buckingham Palace right now. Let me tell you what our temperature <laughs> is because uh, I have it like in one of my cities that I look at on my weather thing. So in, uh, where are you? Oh, in London, oh, it's a, it might not look as cloudy as it is <laughs> in my picture. It's cloudy and a high of 40 or of 56. And it's currently 56. So we've reached our height and then it's gonna be rainy the next couple of days. <laughs> but, wow. Yeah, but in sunny Orlando, it's like sunny and high is loosely 90 like every day. <laughs> yikes, 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 yikes. Wow. Yeah. Oh my goodness. Uh, well, shall we, shall we try, what, what blend are you going to try? Yeah. Okay, so I'm going to do, first I'm going to do uh, the Premium Emperor's Palace Tea. And okay. it is, it does not explain what it is. Uh, I'm not great at identifying tea leaves, but it reminds me of like I don't know like here I don't know if you can even see it it's like kind of green or what like it's like the long kind of twisty right thing. and it does look more green than it looks black so right. so we'll see what what it is and then I'm also going to do I've had these before but they're good uh the premium white chai and premium coconut and chocolate that sounds chocolate delicious and coconut technically well, so mine, and I just, I already ripped it open, so not so pretty when I put it to the screen now, but it's just, <laughs> right. um, this is the Empire Blend. Right. Um, and yeah, my friend who's living in London right now, um, sorry, the whole love-hate thing just went through my brain there. Um, <laughs> <laughs> love her to pieces, hate okay. her to in there. Um, <laughs> you, have to, you have to process those emotions every time. <laughs> Oh my gosh. So yeah, so this is, um, I will tell you, this is a strong Assam. Oh, okay. Because um, when I drink this, it's funny lately, because I've been doing a lot of Assam tea, which is just a really nice solid black tea from India. I, mm -hmm. I can tell when that caffeine hits the bloodstream and it's oh, like, really? yeah, I get a little, <laughs> a little anxious and I'm like, okay, it's just like a little charging. You really don't have anything to psych yourself out about. So just calm down. Um, yeah. So <laughs> it's pretty strong. <laughs> it's pretty strong. That's great. So, and here I am, I'm going to be doing three cups of it. And then I'm supposed to go and have tea this afternoon with a friend of mine on the street. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> going to have to take a sleeping pill in the middle of the afternoon just to calm down or That's something. <laughs> What's the, what are the other two teas? So the other two is um, Knightsbridge blend. Okay. These are just very yeah. nice. She must yeah. go on. Very pretty. <laughs> walks out her door and goes down to Harrods and picks up her little package of teas and says, I think I'll send some to my friend Nancy. And yeah, she's a hater. I love it. What's <laughs> that one say? This is Brompton Road. And I, I do, I have to look that up, but I'm pretty sure Brompton is, well, I know it's in England. But <laughs> <laughs> is it actually, is it actually London? Somebody's out there going, you idiot. Why don't you know? Brompton. Right. Uh, what? <laughs> we can't know it all oh well we have a brompton road in maryland but i'm quite sure well it's that, doubt it's that one <laughs> so brompton road is actually in knightsbridge which is this one oh, so, right. um yeah so brompton road so where's knightsbridge by chelsea and kensington yeah it's it's out it's right up yeah it's it's okay. in there southern okay. london southern nice. london yeah so yeah, my emperor's uh, blend is a looking either like white tea or green tea. I can't really quite tell. It Just, looks kind of maybe it's a blend of both. I wonder maybe because it's definitely more uh, like it's not very green color. Uh, so maybe it's a white. Oh. So let's see if I can do this without spilling. <laughs> yeah it is light I can like, see that. very light it's like as much as i can tilt it <laughs> yeah, without, without, okay well you can see mine right here mine's a very dark but of oh, course there you, go. I, you know we're talking the the tea bag to water ratio in this teacup is whew, 
Um, right. More, more than what I'm used to, but um, I guess that's what they do in jolly old England, right? Right. So, yeah, um, I know. I've started filling my personal tea bags a little bit less if I'm doing it by the cup. Correct. Too, correct. Yeah, too strong. Too strong. Um, but let's see. So you finished Prince Harry's book. I did finish Prince Harry's book. No. I did. Um, it was it was an easy read. Um, it was, and I don't mean that as a bad thing. I, I like yeah. an easy read. I like something that I can pick up and and kind of breathe through. And um, it's not and a I chore. enjoyed it. Um, there are some things that uh, man, I'd like to know a little bit more about. Um, mm -hmm. I want to question William. Uh, so my perspective if we take this as truth mm -hmm. and i'd like to take it as truth i'd like to sure. take harry's truth this is how he feels like that, that's why he wrote the book to say that he wrote it for money yeah i'm sure there's part of that he needs it um but i do think that he was trying to get out there the abuse by the media mm -hmm. and that's my big takeaway on this is um how abusive the media is right in every aspect not just in a royal's life right um, and in politics and everything else i just have become be, gotten to question i mean we say we, we, we say clickbait right these right. ridiculous headlines that they will say because they have to make that headline the grabber to pull you in right and then it usually has nothing to do nothing with to headline. do with it nothing right or it's salacious and right, uh, right. libel and whatever Right. So the things that I got out of that were the pressure and the desire he has to set the record straight about the smallest of things, the right. most egregious of things um, that the media has taken and skewed for their own bait clicks, whatever, for yeah. them, excuse me, and for the selling of their own papers and things right. like that. Um, and so I understand Harry's frustration right. and I'd like to see a new monarch turn over where they, I mean, I, I, I do live, I shouldn't say live by, but I do respect, mm -hmm. never complain, never explain, right. mm -hmm. or did I get that? They never explain, never complain, whichever one right. it is. Um, but there needs to be a point where they go, this, that's it. Enough right. is enough. And, right. um, and I, that's, I think that that was where Harry was coming from. So the couple of things that I'm questioning is right at the end of the book, the last chapter, and he's talking about how he's standing at Frogmore on the grounds after his, um, after Prince Phillips's funeral. And he's right. talking with his mm -hmm. dad and his brother. William starts shaking him. I want you to be happy. I want you to be happy. Don't you believe me? I want you. And I'm like, why the drama? What was that all about? Yeah. Um, why were you shaking your brother? And why are you so hell bent on convincing him that he want that you want him to be happy? Um, I just felt like there was something left unsaid there. Yeah. I don't know. Well, I feel like what was, yeah, like what was weird about that, or I don't know, like. What I thought about it was, uh, and I think Harry may have said this at one point, it's one of his stories where it's like, he realized like, they're not hearing him. They're not listening to him, but he's like, but also I'm not hearing them. Like, yeah, so he, he they're so, out. yeah. So I would say both can be true, right? William does want his brother to be happy and he wants him to be happy in a way that works with William's life, right? Like, see, I, I was, I want you so, to be happy. Was that, was that it? I want you to be happy and being with Megan is not going to make you happy. Is that what that cry was about? Or I think, well, because it already, because at that point, all the stuff had happened. So I feel like he's, yeah, it's just saying like, he wants you to be happy, but like, this isn't the way like, yeah, 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 yeah. So I don't know if he's necessarily, I mean, they, he has plenty of things where it sounds like they turn on their feelings for Megan, right? Like calling her that woman or whatever, yeah. but, um, 
but yeah, I'd say it's it's more of just, you know, if she if she could have fallen in line and wasn't so American, <laughs> right? Like if yeah. she, but also like Harry never totally fit either. And they the media made it that way too. Correct. Right? Correct. Like, yeah. I was shocked to hear about the whole like they made him the dumb one from a small kid in school right, and like, right. that's crazy especially since it wasn't even like true it, but then like what is the kid gonna do if like the whole world's telling him he's the dumb one and no one will listen to him then it's like fine whatever I'll just do what I want like yeah you guys won't yeah. listen to the way yeah yeah well in the end when they when he's meant to, and this this is where I guess it can be frustrating because he doesn't call out his grandmother mm -hmm. but she's a party to the conversation mm -hmm. when he was back there when they sat down and they said we've got five options for you if you know if you're going to step back a bit we have five right. options for you they sort of chose number three but then forced on him number one right. they had kind of decided on option three but by the time he got back to canada Mm -hmm. he was given papers saying you're going with option one he's like this isn't what we decided right and so um yes they fled but they were in a way they were forced out right on right some, on some levels again if if, if harry's truth is right. true um i want to go back to saying that i'd not seen it before but after watching the documentary and reading the book mm -hmm. i genuinely believe that these two have affection and love for I mean you know oh yeah it, they it, have it, a it, very it, strong connection yeah they really do and it, that it's not um I, I really don't think that it was that she was a going in for this you know for money or or anything like that mm -hmm. I don't think she was you know I do it's, think that there, there is like, a, yeah it seems like a very deep like genuine love that I feel like most people would be lucky to have <laughs> you know very very but true they, but they also have horrible I mean it's like against the world they have you know to see yeah. them stay together yeah I know yeah. I, I agree with that um I thought the reference to the psychic was like what oh I forgot what was the psychic yeah. one okay so he, and he never really came out and called her that um but um Megan had been out in the town and she found this Christmas ornament with Elizabeth, Queen Elizabeth's photo on it or picture yeah. of a painting or a drawing or something like that. Yeah, I think it was just like, yeah, like a little ornament of the queen yeah. or something. Yeah. yeah. So they put it on the tree front center and, um, and Harry, I thought Harry, if I'm not mistaken, Harry said something like, you know, I, it was kind of like in hindsight, it was like, why did we put it where we did? But the right. tree was, you know, um, well, Archie was running around yeah, like, and a toddler, it off right. or shook the tree or something and the ornament went crashing to the ground and they all just kind of laughed about it right um oh well can't can't replace that and he goes to see um I guess it was a psychic um yeah. and said and your mother was there or your, your mother's watching oh your mother thought that was funny right yes yeah and he says well I always feel that my mother and she says no 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 she's here with you right now and oh, she's yeah. saying something about an ornament an ornament broke and she thought that was very cute and and she was watching I mean wow yeah right <laughs> chills, right yeah exactly very strange i'm gonna interject real quick and say yes. how's your first date uh it's good it's very it's light so it i definitely think it's a it looks like it's more of a green tea or an oolong maybe it kind of tastes like um uh, i don't know a white tea to me but okay. yeah interesting like, i feel like there's like zero hint of grass <laughs> good good no grass here no grass here mine's very stout it's a very it's just a really good black tea there's it's malty um it mixes very well with my one sugar cube it's just it's nice. very really really nice very mm -hmm. nice so i was gonna say also uh about like in the book so where he talks about where he's like trying to talk to his dad right like they're in canada or whatever and his dad's like right like you have to write it out like write it to me or whatever yes. and then yeah and then that gets leaked or that gets taken as like oh he's ready to leave you know and it was kind of like no I said like 
that's absolutely kind of like the last thing we would want to do if like unless we're for, you know that kind of thing so that was yeah so that wasn't great uh and also you're right he never says anything really bad about the queen but it's more about the people who are around her correct so the fact okay. that she i forget which trip it was but uh <clears throat> she you know he was gonna get to see her right and have like a tea or whatever with just her and they could talk about things uh during all the you know the drama of the megan stuff and then as he like is there he's told actually she's got too much on her schedule now mm -hmm. and she can't see you and it's like she she told him i have the whole week i have nothing on my calendar the whole week yeah. And when he's ready to go see her, they're like, no, 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 she can't see you. She's too busy. Yeah. And then he calls her and she says, no, well, they're telling me that I have something to do. And yeah, I think she was manipulated. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I think, you know, obviously I love, love the queen, but she, she is still a human. Right. So I would say that also like, you know, she gets to place the blame on her we'll say handlers right yeah, yeah. so even if she like even if she wants to see him but like they're telling her like it's not a good idea or whatever and she's kind of like eh, you're right like it probably shouldn't but then she can just be like well they told me I'm busy like it's not my fault right right right, right. Like, yeah so I'm not in control uh -huh, <laughs> uh <-huh. laughs> yeah the whole send it in writing was ridiculous yeah um, right and then um and then used you know and shame on charles gonna say that because he should know better they've got the people that do work for them that they, they leak all the time they do you know oh my gosh it's ridiculous so well, and they like claim that people leak when really it's their press office so like when they say a palace source or whatever right like they never identify that it's officially from the whatever press right like or the you know their little media people that they each have so uh it's like they can just claim like oh well it was just some random employee that like spread this gossip when really they're like handing it over <laughs> yeah right right so, and like how child's trying to say like you know in a weird way if you can like make it through it they'll respect you later for it like because he kept up his the weird agreement even though they like dragged him and diana all through the, the mud and worse right but right. Get, and like in camilla obviously and like he had you know an uphill battle with that and like the fact that now he gets some good press it's like well that feels that much better though like it means yeah. that much more because they like me today <laughs> and they're not being mean it's like right that is a, like that's an abusive relationship like you're like it, exactly, you're face, exactly. Right? well he, you know he hit me and he gave me a black eye but today he told me he loved me exactly he said yeah. he'd never do it again good point yeah. like, yes you know yes, and just right, be like exactly. you don't yeah i mean like you don't you don't know him like i do like when he's not drinking he's fine and that's like that's, that's that's kind of Charles, right that's really good yeah <laughs> yeah charles oh. is just kind of like look like it's okay like it kind of sucks, but like it's better to have them on our side when we can't, right? Like, and yeah, yeah, I, 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 yeah. I, I think that's a great analogy, and um, and you know, we 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 want our freedom of the press, but freedom of the press was supposed to be so that people can print facts and not have places for our politicians and our monarchies to hide behind that truth right. will out. But yeah. um, it, it shouldn't be for the purpose of we want to sell more paper. So we're going to start printing and, and watch this because I'm going to flip it right here. So we're going to go ahead and print that Prince William wants his um, his uh, charge affair, his um, mistress, mistress, Rose Hanbury, to be accepted by the palace now and by the royal family. That was the headline yeah. I read the other day. That was like, I was like, you have got to be kidding right. me. Right. Um, just the stuff that they print just so that you'll read the article is ridiculous. Right. And now I just like question so much. I know it doesn't all come from like the competing houses, but it is like, well, what's going on with Charles and Camilla at the moment? Like 
maybe their press secretary people slip like you know said hey run the story about williams like whatever supposed mistress like claim that they want he wants to accepted by the palace like you know right yeah yeah you know, it's always the look over here because we're doing something else over here <laughs> right or or but when we want you to look over here don't take a picture of kate middleton in a um in a ten a tennis skirt with a tennis racket in her hand right so she'll right. be the front page news and we want all the attention over here right now right right and for those who haven't read the book if, if we even have an audience that's in the book where charles mm -hmm. says she's doing what today she's with the you know the british open no she just you better not take a picture with the tennis racket in her hand right. because it's going to take away from my good press right now mm -hmm. so um yeah it, it's it's, it's so I, I i you know i i get to the end of the book and i'm like and i never thought i'd say it but well done you harry yeah Stay where you are get the heck out it's right. toxic. It's unhealthy. Of course, I want the relationship and the families to mend, um, mm -hmm. but they need to have the powwow. They need to come together. And there should be, I don't know, I'd love to think, I'd love to yeah. think that Harry and Will and Kate and Megan eventually will kind of reunite, right. maybe in the days after Charles is done. Right. And mm -hmm. realize, hey, this is so bad. And we can really make a difference. We can change. I mean, this is right, right. You know, yeah, they're the new generation. Here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I, I don't know. Um, I have to go back. I have to touch on that whole story where um, Harry and Meghan have. Um, so the Sussexes have the Cambridges over for dinner. Yes. And wasn't it Easter or something like that? And they start to air their grievances and. Kate was all, you know, and I, I, I read, sort of read the story before too. She had her tail feathers in a ruffle because mm -hmm. Megan had referenced her hormones in yes. a comment around the time of the wedding. And Megan's like, what are you talking about? And she said, I forgot to do something. And you said I had baby brain because, and, and because of my, you know, my hormones yeah, having had a child. And Megan's like, I say that to my girlfriends. And she's like, you don't know me well enough to talk about my hormones. And it's like that what? that to me just sounded like it was just so petty. So, no, so British. It was like oh, it's so, yeah, like right? it's so American of making like, yeah, whatever. We're like we say baby brain all the time. Like that's not a thing. Like nobody cares. But yeah, so like I would say like no one's in the wrong necessarily as far as like Megan shouldn't feel bad that she said that because it's like I mean, that was just an offhand remark that is like so easily said around here, right? right. So, when she was trying to make light of a situation that could, you know, that was getting very tense around the wedding. Right, right. but so, but Kate, right? It's like, she's not used to anybody talking that way. And it probably, you know, and like just trying to think of it from her side, right? Like, we'll just say she's uh, whatever, upper, upper crust now of, uh, British society and it's kind of like not just don't talk about my hormones I think there's more to it than that it's like don't like don't ex like I don't know kind of like don't dumb me down or whatever you know like kind of like instead of saying like oh well you're blonde or whatever like you forgot because of this it's like no just don't make it a thing like whatever I forgot something it doesn't okay. mean that it's my whereas, whereas I think what Megan was doing was trying to say it's not your fault and I'm not calling you dumb I'm saying that you have a lot on your mind right now exactly and trying to do the opposite I was wondering I mean so Kate did not grow Kate grew up in a wealthy family sure but uh, yeah um, but they weren't noble right they it was weren't. Like, in business I yeah. just have a hard time believing I mean because the the British humor is so naughty. They're so That's true. off color sometimes. It, it just right. really surprises me that Kate would just be go, oh, she mentioned my hormones. I mean, uh, come on. You went, you, you, right. you have a normal childhood, normal childhood. And, and so I just, I, I don't know. I just, I just feel like it started to just get very petty. And, it did. Um, yeah, it definitely did become like, yeah, just like, devolve into just all of them being like well you did this well you did that I didn't like it when you did this well I didn't mean to do that but you did this <laughs> like it was yeah. very much mommy exactly. yeah exactly yeah there, there is yeah. that so um, um yeah 
No, I, I just can't believe, like, I don't know. I guess, you know, everybody has different personality types, but it just seems surprising to me that, like, four adults can come together and they decide, uh, like, they're gonna sort of not just air their grievances, but maybe like take care of these things, right? And then they make it worse. Like, it's like, there's no one, like what's happening here? <laughs> and they just, I don't know. And and it's like, you know, uh, I guess it makes sense, but it's sort of like, whatever Kate's upset about, William has to be upset about, like, you know, it's not like there's four individuals, right? It's Correct. like two Correct. and two. Right, right. So it's just, yeah, I don't know. But I do, I'm like you. I hope that in the future, <clears throat> I don't see it in the real near future, but in the future at some point, I I would like them to yeah, come back together and mend things like when stuff's not so fresh. <laughs> yeah, know? yeah. Uh, th- if they could let bygones be bygones. I feel like some of this is, typical sibling rivalry and we've talked about that I love the part in the book where Harry asked um granny can he keep the beard for the wedding and she said yes oh right and Will oh was yes and William was so mad Will livid because he wanted to have his beard and mm-hmm. he's not allowed to have a beard I, and I'm one I guess they're not let which is so funny because mm-hmm. it's so in mode right now a mm-hmm. nice trimmed beard like what Harry mm-hmm. has okay and let's go back to Edward and let's go back to King Henry and things right. like, it's like these men had beards because that's what they did back then. Why can't William have a beard if he wants one? But so there was a privilege given to Harry that was not given to William. And there are right. privileges given to William that are not given to Harry. Um, and so there is, it's not just the, mon- there's a monarch rivalry right. there, but it's built upon some of these, you know, sibling rivalries too um and vice versa so um I I thought you know that's true because yeah they're not like you know treated uh yeah fairly and it's not like anyone's ever completely treated fairly but they're very clearly treated different by everyone and and what they get to do and what they get like don't get to do yes so you know I'm just thinking about like you know people I know uh where it's like like they're parents are helping them but they have siblings and maybe this like financially whatever maybe the siblings don't exactly need anything right then but the parents want to make sure things are even even so they will, yeah. so they will give whatever they gave to one kid to the other one just to make it even right, right. and that's not right and that is not what William and Harry did it's like you can you can't have a beard you can have a beard you can't wear that uniform. You can wear that one, which right. I still think is funny because I didn't like Harry's suit at his wedding. I thought it looked like a funeral suit and I loved William's red coat. <laughs> yes, yes. And for mourning and like what we call a mourning suit. Yeah. M-O-R-N-I-N-G for the morning. It was typically gray because it was that, you know, you didn't want to wear dark, heavy colors, but no, you're absolutely right. Um, yeah the red was so much more regal um it just looked great and pictures and everything like absolutely absolutely yeah, yeah. So, but, but i do love a man in a black tuxedo i had jose wear his um oh yeah his black uniform for our wedding and uh because that's that's what i wanted um, oh but anyway well, well, I, I guess i'm just not used to it that was the first time i've ever seen it <laughs> Yeah, yeah. I, I, I like the red. I like I like the color myself um, for, for a royal wedding, something like that. Right. So um, so real quick on my teas, they are very, very similar in flavor. They seem to get stronger in astringency as I go down the line, but um, it, there's, there's not too much of a difference between the three, I have to say. Really? Okay. Well, I know mine are different because I've got like a white chai and then I have like a chocolate and coconut. <laughs> <laughs> so which sounds delicious who doesn't love yeah, chocolate I say, and i am eating uh scottish shortbread uh fingers the little the little walkers ones walkers yes walkers yeah. uh and walkers the official scottish cookie bread brand of disney world <laughs> right yeah yeah and what's funny 
so like Piper, I feel like she's tried them before and didn't like them. She acted like, what are these? Like these aren't cookies. But then like, I don't know how long ago that was because then the other day she saw the box in the pantry and said she wanted them. And I was like, are you sure? And she had like just had sugar and other stuff. So I was like, no, 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 not today. But I brought them as a surprise like snack after school one day. And uh, she like got them all up and thought, what are these called? I was like, well, they're cookies. She goes, but what are they called? I go, they're called shortbread. And I said, I started to say they're from England. I go, well, they're from Scotland. And I said, which is close to England. I said, which is like, uh, I said, you know, the flag, the queen's flag. I go, that's all their flag. <laughs> Like, they all belong to the same flag because <laughs> she knows the name England so much but I never talk about Scotland so right, just... right. <laughs> that's funny yeah yeah oh my goodness. But, well you're going soon I am yeah for real and well I say my passport isn't here yet but they did uh cash my check so I know that it, my stuff was received by them uh at least a week or two ago so and I did pay the expedited fee of like 60 okay. bucks or whatever to so when are you going may you do you if you don't want to be specific that's fine I understand oh no no, no. i'm just saying i don't remember uh may i always have to look at the calendar because i know if it I by the... was going to england it would just be like all i would see was the I date. know <laughs> it is in may for some reason i keep forgetting the the start date it's the 14th it's a sunday to a two to Tuesday the 23rd so you're going so right little, after the coronation like literally right after yeah right I know and so that oh, so I'm thinking that will be cool and hopefully there'll still be plenty oh, of souvenirs left everybody, and they'll all be on clearance they'll I know right clearance. yeah that's the time to go <laughs> <laughs> no I don't know about that because you're talking your summer tour, uh, tourist season coming through and all those people are going to want that stuff. So oh, I right. that's it's true. Be discounted. I, I've been on the fence. I'm like, do I want to get the Charles coronation cup? Do I want to do it? Do I want to do right. it? Um, and I told you don't buy anything yet because something something might come. <laughs> all right, all right. Did you see the t-shirt I sent you this morning? Yes, I saw it real quick because I was getting out of the eye, but I liked it was a coronation shirt, right? It was a coronation t-shirt. I thought it was really neat. I liked it. It's that really one. cute. Let me see if you can find it on there before I can. Yeah, it's like here we go. So, but yeah, it's cool. It's really cute. There you go. I you loved it. I, I'm not a t shirt person, but I like the v neck. It looks like it's pretty light. Yeah, material. it looks it's really nice and like comfy. Yeah, yeah. And, and it has all things London and it just says King Charles. So, I, I don't want a picture of King Charles on my shirt. It's just gonna say, right. <laughs> but, but I like that shirt. I think that's really great. That's a funny thing to note because you're right. It's like the queen. It's like everybody wants her picture on whatever it is that has the queen, right? But then it's right. like, no, no, no. Like Charles, whatever. Like yeah, yeah. yeah. And it's just and honestly, I'll say it has nothing to do with his looks. It's just kind of like I don't know. Like who cares? Like you're just some dude. <laughs> I know, right? Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> I want to show you're, you're not our cute like old lady. <laughs> <laughs> very true. Very true. So I am drinking from um, a Royal Albert set of four cups that Jose gave me. I've only got my three, but this one I use every, so if you can see the front, mm. a little, easy, oh, little bunnies, easy, but a bunny. Yeah. And he's right there on the inside. Oh, of the cup that's too. adorable. Yeah, so this this was called the candy collection, and um, so I photographed this for Easter a couple of years ago. I always post that picture. That's awesome. So um, anyway, um, so I'm going to Florida to Jacksonville um, the weekend before Mother's Day. Okay. And um, yeah, actually, that's Coronation weekend. Um, so and I'm giving my mother a tea party. I haven't been with my mom or my dad for that fact, for Mother's Day or Father's Day for 15 years, something oh, like wow. that. Oh, wow. Because we always have, we're always up here. Right. Um, so I'm going down and I just printed the invitations today, but I'm throwing my mother and her friends a tea party. I'm doing a oh. tea party for them. That's um, awesome. Yeah. And does so your mom know or is it a surprise? What's does that? your mom know? Oh, yes, yes, yes. Because okay. she had to give me the invitation list. That's and for everybody. Yeah. 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 So I get to go down and be with her. Um, it's the week before, but twofold one because I want to be back here for Mother's Day with my family mm -hmm. um the women all want to be with their families for Mother's Day um so I don't want to take away from that but and I'm going to segue right into um some business talk here um sure. 
the Lucy Burns Museum, I think last I talked to you, I was preparing yes. for my, my suffragette tea. We were calling it the yes. equality, the equality. Mm -hmm. um, gosh, my head just went down a million directions. I could have gone with that. Um, anyway, um, it went so well, so well. I was like, I, I, I did awesome. not touch the ground for the rest of the day. Um, I just, um, so they came in, I did not do food. Mm -hmm. Um, I did bring the tea. I steeped the tea. I, and I had three helpers. Oh my gosh, where have they been for the last three years? <laughs> but I didn't have to pay them. They were there voluntarily. They were That's phenomenal. Awesome. I would show them, I showed them how to steep the tea. I was still had my hand in it and they would pour the tea and go around and refresh cups. So I presented my game, which is about 12 trivia questions. And mm -hmm. it's from those answers that I explain is it pinky up, pinky right. down, which is the British flag, which is the English flag? Um, is it called, you know, is there a difference between high tea, afternoon tea? So I get to do all those talking points. And then when I was finished, I went right into a, um, it's about a seven minute presentation mm -hmm. of the history of tea and how it led to the suffrage movement in England and, um, and in America. Mm -hmm. um, the museum is called the Lucy Burns Museum because Lucy Burns was arrested outside of the gates of Washington, D.C. in front of the White House. Right. And then it was in 1918 and she was arrested and she was sent down to the jail where this is. So we have this, it's called a workhouse. It's a prison campus, but it doesn't look like a prison. It's a beautiful brick campus and they're doing, we're getting a brewery, we're getting a music venue. They have really, oh, wow. really the whole thing. So tucked away in the corner is this tiny little Lucy Burns Museum. Oh, wow. So I paired with them, or they paired with me, however you want to put that. And so I give the I gave a presentation. I had um, a slideshow that I put with it, so, yeah. so we could have visuals. And it was very well received. And I am going back Mother's Day weekend, okay. so Saturday of Mother's Day. They have asked me back. They have asked me back for July 29, which is Lucy Burns Museum, okay. and we are talking about trying to do a tea tasting in there somewhere. Um, so. Here I was telling you, I'm pulling back. I'm not going to renew my website, my domain name. Right. I just plopped down the money last week and renewed <laughs> everything. And I'm going to go through this at least for the next year yeah. and try to go more of a consulting route. I'm also going to see if I can put a presentation together and sell it to our two, sell it to our two country clubs nearby to oh, right. see if they would want to do an afternoon tea event also that way. So right. Getting away from the catering, bridal showers, making sandwiches and things like that, and trying to go into more of a historical. You're like a, speak, you're like a guest yeah, speaker. Speaking, speaking. Yeah. And, mm -hmm. uh, oh my gosh, I just had so much fun with it. It That's was amazing. So great. Yeah. So, yeah. So, cheers, you know, to cheers. revamping instead of quitting. So, hey, there we go. <laughs> exactly. So, what does that tea look like? Is that one light also? Mine are all like, woo, super. Yeah, because this is the white chai. So this one is like a white tea that's chai flavored. Now you like chai. I love chai. <laughs> so how is that as a white? It is delightful. It's like, it's just like a lighter version of a chai, right? So it's not as, I don't know, cozy feeling. It's just like a yummy <laughs> But it has taste. what the the cinnamon and cardamom or whatever it is. Yeah, like the cinnamon and I don't know cloves or whatever. Right, right, right. Yeah. The the Christmas flavors. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that's what I call it. Very good. That's awesome. Yeah, yeah. so that's very good. But I say right now it has crumbs of shortbread cookies in it. <laughs> so, which I will say. Even though, right, like technically we're not supposed to like dunk or whatever. Uh, something I just realized. Uh, so tip for those of you at home, if you dip uh, your biscuits or whatever, but these soak up really nicely. Mm -hmm. uh, whichever tea you're drinking changes the flavor of this. So like I was doing it in just like the plain emperor's tea, right? right. And it was still, it was good, but it wasn't anything special. And then I was dipping in this and like, oh, you got a whole new uh, yeah, I, a flavor profile with that exactly, one. Exactly. Yes. Yeah. So then I was like, oh, look at that. <laughs> nice. Nice. Well, I, I bet it's probably going to be delicious with chocolate and coconut too. Yeah, I know. Right. Yeah. I say so, that's next. I'm almost done with my white chai. Um, but let's see. So uh, are there other royal things that we were. Well, I'm looking at um, royal news today. So some of that clickbait. 
the mm-hmm. last two weeks has been Kate's having a fourth baby. Oh. And, and William is on board. Well, I should hope so. I yeah, make, he's on I board while really also right helping his mistress with stuff. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. But I, I, no, I think that factory is closed. She's over 40. I'm not saying that you have to, I, I had Jackie at 40, okay? I'm not saying that, but seriously. But um, I think for I, I them. Think they're established. I think they're, yeah. they're done. Right. Um, so yeah, I'm really. I would say that that is, uh, obviously the media making up whatever but it is I feel like it's like oh she's pregnant and William's supportive but do you remember, remember that story we just talked about his mistress like right like, oh she's right. pregnant and there's a mistress like I feel yes. like they go hand in hand <laughs> of garbage that they're it's telling. so ridiculous it's just ridiculous um I also read a headline yesterday and it says Harry wishes he had married a Kate and not a Megan and I was like he would never have been happy with a Kate. He, no, yeah, he was ridiculous. Not at all. And yeah, it's same. people people making money off of their lives, and it's ridiculous. And this just, is interesting. Yeah. This is really interesting. Get? Okay, this is. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm not making this up. Okay, Prince Harry's savage takedown by sex toy company sparked advertising complaint. Oh my god, that's almost worth reading. <laughs> Don't give them your clicks, Nancy. <laughs> I know. It, that is ridiculous. That is so ridiculous. Um, let's see. Sarah Ferguson in the news. I do Harry feel like... Um, in a relationship with the firm. Uh, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, I feel like Eugenie and Beatrice uh, get talked about more now that, I don't know, there's not the queen, right? It's like... yeah. They have to spread it out. I feel like they get to be in the news a little bit more. Sure. But which one is it that hangs out with Harry all the time? Is that Eugenie? Eugenie. Okay. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And they're the ones that are going to get some kind of vacation home, right? Well, they were talking about it. At least that's, that's, oh, okay. what, the, that's what the headlines were. So I don't know. Sure. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. So, um, yeah. I, I, I'm, I'm assuming the coronation is going to be televised. Um somewhat like you know any of the other royal weddings or right things like that so that's right over there isn't that that's like real close to the sussex anniversary too is and it? Then, yeah and the um yeah. they're not the, they're the wales is now not the Cambridge, right. but the wales is mm-hmm. their anniversary is coming up at the end of the month because i remember they right were, theirs was was theirs like the 11th or 10th it was or it was like right it was something like that it was like somewhere just before Jackie was born I think I was in the hospital when the um right having I'm gonna put it um, radio silence there you go Prince William and Kate oh April 29th 29th oh that's right I'm sorry it's my sister's birthday I should oh okay I knew it was 2011 okay so now let's see what about uh Harry because I was having a tea that day. Like, it was like right around Mother's Day. Let's see. Hey. Megan married. Oh, they were married in May. May 19th. 19th. Maybe yeah. Tonight. So I will yeah. be there for their anniversary <laughs> where they no longer live. We'll be in California, honey. <laughs> <laughs> That's so are they going to the coronation? Do we know? We still don't know. I think we're still, uh, we, as in the the T group of us, I believe we're still in the mindset or like kind of the understanding where it's like, Harry, well, actually, I think, I feel like we switched around our thoughts on this. So uh, when you and I talked about it last, so we were talking about how it's like, they can't win, like, you know, damned if they do, damned if they don't, like, but I feel like there will be more press about them if they're both there. If Harry goes on his own, then, and Megan stays behind, like, that's good as far as, uh, I don't know, I guess, media appeasing, right? Like, whatever the media is going to be. It's like, okay, Harry's there. He's not doing anything crazy. Megan's behind, so you don't have to, like, freak out about that. 
-hmm. but I think it might have been Trevor who pointed out he's like he, he and you know <clears throat> Trevor's never been like all about Harry and Meghan or, right. or at least like uh you know um defending them but he was kind of saying like yeah but if I'm going to like it's my wife who married into the family too like I should bring my wife like yeah so sort of like screw you guys like we're part of the family whether you like it or not <laughs> like we will be quiet and try not to like cause a stir or whatever but it's gonna happen regardless and it's like they should be there it should be it, right in theory right all these shoulds it's like it should mean more to Charles to have his son there and daughter-in-law and, and daughter-in-law children they, right and grandchildren yes even if it means that the media has a heyday with it because in your reality <laughs> right like in the real world it's like it should mean more that they came to it like despite all okay. the stuff right yeah. like they came to support you that's really all it is and but that's not what the fly, the bee, and the wasp, and this is a reference to Harry. Oh, Hill. right. Well, yeah, that's not. So let's go back to. Yeah, remind me who did the fly, bee, and the wasp? They all work for the queen. The queen. Okay. Yeah. So the fly is somebody he'll take care of things. The bee has a little more sting when he does it, and the wasp is somebody that will, you know, ha has the ability to to kill a story to create create whatever something. Right. how they were referred to so I absolutely agree it should mean more but let's talk about the people who are constantly feeding you right. positivity or negativity and when you have these people constantly telling you know whispering in the ear of the king now saying mm -hmm. um but it's going to do this but it's going to do that you know and then it starts messing with what he's thinking is supposed That's to true. you know and so instead of him thinking this is going to be a glorious event it's more like well how is the PR going to play out on this right. um so, yeah, um, so all three of yeah. whale children, so the whale's children, mm -hmm. George, Charlotte, and Louis are supposed to take part in the king's coronation procession. Okay. The Sussex children have yet to be invited. They're a little bit young, although I, I guess mm -hmm. Archie could, but I mean, mm -hmm. um, let's see, Prince Harry, Meghan Markle will be sidelined during the coronation. Will Meghan, Markle, and Prince Harry attend King Charles' coronation? This is as of March 23rd, what mm -hmm. we know so far. Um, just stepping back, it's, it's, don't, it's very and That makes in here. sense anyway that like the Sussex's children wouldn't be involved. I feel like they're, because they are removed, like, I don't know. They don't even live over there. So it's not right. right. Um, so this is one that says, oh, come on, get out of there. Oh, let me out. Oh, because it's from you have to subscribe to actually read the article. Oh, of course. Um, some are saying doubtful. Some are saying Megan's demands may be chaos. I doubt that they are demands. Is that it's just bad evil press again? Right. Um, giving people the benefit of the doubt. I don't think anybody's coming in and demanding anything. Um, no. I know that I, I, I had read, put it this way, I had read somewhere that one of the things that the Sussexes wanted was um, a birthday celebration somewhere in the middle of all of it to, because coronation is taking place on the day of Lilibet's uh, birthday, if I'm not mistaken. And they just wanted a chance for the family to celebrate her birthday and for the cousins to be together and to do something. Um, that's what I read. Okay, that's you read. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. We can't believe anything we read anymore. Um, right. Yeah, because I'm thinking about the, let's say, the practicality behind that is like, so I feel like it doesn't have to be that exact day that's her birthday, right? Like if they're no, on a trip, it could be like the next day or whatever yeah. it is, right? I don't think he was saying it has to be on the day of the coronation. There's too many, he knows of that. Okay, yeah, yeah, that's right. Okay, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it's just like while we're there, there. Yeah. yeah, can we have a gathering? Yeah. Yeah, so um, New Zealand Herald, March 15th, Prince Harry will reportedly attend Charles' coronation alone. 
mm-hmm. not bringing May again. So I want to bring up the point then about the security. Mm-hmm. And I would kind of sneer at this before about, you know, the royal family won't pay for our security. We need security. We need security. Right. Um, and I was just like, whatever, you know, you, don't you make enough money? You can pay for it by yourself. Right. Um, the threats against Megan because of the vitriol that has been stirred up, created, and falsely right. so in so many cases, the white supremacy um, in England um, mm-hmm. and possibly even some places here in the United States, right? the credible threats. It's funny. So I went out to lunch with a friend um, last week and she's like, oh, that Megan Marvel, I can't stand her. And I said, okay. I said, you know, I said, I, I haven't been a big fan of hers and Harry's either. I said, but the book has been interesting. And she mm-hmm. goes, you don't believe all of it. And I said, I think you should read it if you're going to, you know, I said, but I said, when the fact that they had to have snipers on the roofs during the wedding, because right. that day they had gotten what they found, what, what the security found right. to be credible threats um, against her and he's pretty, he is, he's protecting her and his family. And some of the things have been so absolutely ugly and terrifying and threatening. Mm -hmm. And I can understand why he's like, what if I ask her to go? What if I say, let's put ourselves in this situation and something her or the children, he would never, that's not his job. His job is to protect her, not to put her out in front of the camera or Mm -hmm. God knows what else. So I, I, you know, after reading some of that, I was like, yeah, I, I can understand that. I can understand where they feel that they should have. It's okay. So he's six in line now. So but the cutting point is apparently five. So after, you know, when you become six and lower, you don't get security, right. but you are the son of the King. Yeah. You're the grandson of the former queen and you, yeah. your, your wife and you are getting threats like this. Yeah. And they don't want to protect you. I feel like, yeah, I feel like that rule would only make sense if you were born six or lower. If you were born above six, then you always kind of need that protection. Right. (laughs) Like, just because a new kid shows up doesn't mean that all of a sudden your life has changed, like, and your needs for security. What I thought was just shocking was, you know, the way that they found out that they were losing their security in Canada or whatever right mm-hmm. and like what they have like two weeks three weeks it was like a very short amount of time to like figure out what they're gonna do while everyone like there were boats out in the water like you know like the paparazzi was literally everywhere drones and whatnot and like the fact that even his like security detail like his closest you know security yes. guy yes. like I'm so sorry like he's like I'm tr- like Basically, we want to stay. We don't want to leave you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But we're being well, forced. Who was it that promised him? Was it his dad? Was it his dad? Was it the queen? Was it somebody said? And somebody said he he said I'm worried. I'm worried, and you know I just want to make sure that we have security. You'll never lose your security. This person said. And I can't oh, right. his dad or his grandmother. You'll never lose that. You'll never lose. I that. bet it was. It'd probably be his dad. I feel like, like the queen. Days later, say, their mm-hmm. security got pulled. Right. So like, yeah, yeah. I know. So, it's, so did, so did he write the book for money? If he's looking for $6 million a year to be able to pay for security, to yeah, protect right? wife, you know, who has death threats against her and, and the children. Um, yeah. Yeah. And it's, and it's not like, I don't know. It's like, he clearly had stuff he wanted to get off his chest and out there so it's not like he came up with a book of crap to sell it right for money right it's more like it was both right like great we'll make some money off of it uh and I really want to get this out there anyway I think it was yeah and I think it was I've got to tell people what is really going on because I'm never going to get the microphone to be able to say the truth yeah and it's gotten so out of hand yeah yes exactly and I just want to say for anybody out there listening to because what just your mom I don't know but take that with everything that we're hearing in this country about one person or another person or this candidate that candidate understand that there is so little actual sticking to the facts Mm -hmm. 
there is more of a, we need to drum up hatred for this and we need to drum up hatred for that. It's right. our camp against your camp that, you know, I'm picking up stuff now and I'm like, I don't know what the truth is anymore. Right, right. And, and, but you know, that, that is the power that these journalists, if you want to call them that have over swaying entire countries into one political motion or one hatred Right. or whatever that this is favored and this it, it, and instead of letting people decide for themselves right. and I think that's where Harry's coming in too is like you have no idea what right. the truth has been behind all of this and I need to let you know and you know and of course that drums up more hatred and it's just sure. it's so ugly out there it's just so ugly out there I say where can I move right <laughs> well and you're right like that's a fair point that it's like yeah they're the royal family so it seems crazy within the family right and and trevor's always making the distinction he's like well they have like three parts to their lives or whatever so mm -hmm. it's like you know they're a human <laughs> like you know they're yeah. like a person yeah. they're you know it's like their siblings or it's a dad whatever family members but then they also have the you know their royal family but then they also have like kind of the goes along with it but it's like the public image or with the firm whatever the firm's doing with them right and it's hard to not take things on a personal level because it is it's like they're dealing with people like you know they're playing with people's actual lives and views that people see them in and like but yeah so like politicians right it's so common that instead of building up we'll say yourself as the politician or your team building you up as the one running it's like hey we found out this crap on the other person and we're gonna put that out there yeah exactly or or we're gonna twist it we're gonna we're gonna well, that's true too yeah yeah, yeah. it's like we're gonna yeah yeah we exactly. they, they do dig up dirt and they want to make sure that gets out there too but to take something and to twist it to make it you yes. know mm -hmm. um so and and for headlines if, if all you read are headlines and that's what we have become a society that just reads headlines right right to, you know these things you know like with with um will and his mistress you know what? that that was the headline or that idiot headline that was um megan thought it was a joke that she had to bow down to the queen no that wasn't what she said it was a joke it was she was right. saying you know harry's like we're gonna go meet your your grandmother and she's like is this a joke you know, yeah. it, it, it had nothing to do. It was completely, it was the, in the yeah, same because it was like so, and it was so spur of the moment. That's yeah. why she was like, are you kidding? Like, are you, yeah, exactly. Is this a joke? I'm, you know, right, right. You did not, yeah, yeah. I was like, this wasn't part of the plan today. No, or whatever, yes, you know? Yeah. And, and so I, I wanted to know what you thought about all the talk about his time in the war. So, oh, so I was gonna, like, a, yeah, yeah. Since you're like military adjacent. Yeah. <laughs> Well, I have to say, so it was really closer to it than I am. <laughs> right. So, um, so when, um, it's one of my favorite times of the night it, it, in the day It's you know, the evening Hosanna, we said, we took Jackie in a bed, like go yeah. and, and we lay in bed and he reads, I read something. And it's just that peaceful, you know, letting right. everything else go. I don't need to think about anything else right now. So I pull up this book and I'm like, and I just looked at Jose, he's like, what are you reading? I'm like, okay, don't judge. <laughs> I'm like, Lil shoved it in my hand. Lil is my neighbor. Across I love it. Yeah, yeah. So they self-proclaimed. I know everything about the royal family. That's um, awesome. She's so funny. She said, so I said, Lil handed it to me. I said, I wasn't going to read it. I said, but uh, I said, I just thought I'd, you know, see what it's about. So when I got to the part about him flying a helicopter, I'm like, Jose, I said, let me read this to you. And I would read, you know, where he talks technically about, there, there's one particular par paragraph where he talks about trying to lift the monkeys being on the helicopter and trying to listen. Yeah. They would listen, and he was like, "Yeah, that's that's." He says, "I've never heard the monkey reference." He says, "But, but I get it." Um, and so there were parts of the book that I would read to him, or he would come in and he's like, "Okay, so what's what's going on with it? Is he still over?" You know. So we would actually have some small conversations about mm -hmm. the um, about his time in the war and what he was doing and everything. Um, nice. So my perspective on it, I, I think it's. I guess my biggest takeaway is it's a shame that he had to leave it um, because of who he was and the threat that it posed to the people around him and everything right. else. It's one more thing that that screwed up for him. Um, and I, I think he was dedicated and quite talented at what he did out there. And it's too bad that he has been stripped of those titles and doesn't, isn't 
part of it anymore. I don't ever remember really reading where he said, and I killed X number of people, you know, I don't remember that. Maybe he it said was like such a small, like just set. It was because I think he was trying to say that like in, we'll just say old timey war or whatever, like in, you know, if you're like on the ground or whatever, like you're, you don't actually know how many people you've killed. But he's saying because right. in these helicopters, everything is recorded and it's reviewed yes. later. Right. Like you literally know the exact number. Exactly. And so that is like something you carry with you. Give me one second. Sure. William, call me when you have questions about the forms, okay? Sorry. Still got to okay. be mom. Still got to be mom. Um, That's okay. So, yeah. Uh, and I feel like I, that's really different. Like, that's just in, I don't know, whether he said that, whether, like, if he would have said the number or not, I just feel like it's a very interesting point of that position or other positions like it when it's being recorded and then watched, reviewed later for if right. you did it right. Right, you yes. You know exactly, like, you're reliving it, but you're also, like, you know exactly how many people you've killed right, right. and it that's very good. different from other wars or yes. other uh, true. roles other true. yeah true mm -hmm. it was such a huge chunk of the book it mm -hmm. was harry coming into his own this is what mm -hmm. he felt he was born to do i think it's really interesting too um and he talked about what a terrible student he was and he hated being in the classroom he hated you know the, the his the challenge to focus, um, to stay dedicated to everything. And I thought it was funny because of a mom of a child who has ADD or ADHD, I was mm -hmm. like, this is sounding somewhat familiar. Yeah. And sure enough, that was, again, that was another headline that I read like two weeks ago when I was in that part of the book, it says some people are questioning whether Harry's ever been diagnosed or tested for ADD. And it sounds like, yeah, I mean, his dad, what does his dad say? He says, yeah, you're not the scholarly type. Yeah, I feel like everybody yeah. kept telling him, yeah, you're not the scholar, you're not the academic type. Like, yeah, basically like, yeah you're not going to go on to university. Like, you're not no. that kind of And type. not everybody has to. And it's, right. So I relayed that to my son, who mm -hmm. hates talking about it to begin with, not not about royals necessarily, but about, yeah. you know, it doesn't <laughs> want that pronounced and, and constantly focused on. But I said, you know, just when you, you know, if you look at everybody else and think, hey, this doesn't happen to anybody else. This is just me. I said, you're talking to somebody who's born in an incredibly privileged background. Right. And he struggled with it. He's, right. he, you know, he still struggles with it now. I said, so I just need you to know that it's okay. And, and yeah, um, I, you know, sometimes I think I have, um, I've developed some of that here in my adult life because I find that when I'm doing something when I'm watching TV I need to be doing something with my hands and it, it oh yeah so yeah. I, I I do wonder about it but yeah it's like I, I just like I said it was a huge chunk of the book I felt like he really wanted to tout that he was very proud of his time in the military it was his calling that's what he was meant to do um so yeah if, if you're looking for more of a military person's perspective I, I don't really have one other than it was interesting to see just how much he really poured himself into that um, mm -hmm. and how proud he was of that. And right. so, yeah. And how, yeah. And how hard he, I don't know, kept trying, either trying to get there or get there again. Like, you know, because the second time around he had to, what was it? It was like four years or something of training, like to be, to do the helicopter pilot the thing. Helicopter, um, I don't think it was, um, it was, it was a long, I, how long. I don't think time. it was a full four years. I mean, he'd already trained on some of the other stuff, but I think to actually fly in the seat was, I don't remember. It was a few months okay. ago and he talked about how he had to go back into a classroom for like two right. or three months of it. And he was like, no, I don't want to go in. I don't want to read books. Excellent. I don't do this. Um, I really res that resonated with me just because mm -hmm. I, I, you know, we, we lived that over here a bit too, you know, mm -hmm. someone trying to young adult trying to find his calling and finding right. you know, what he needs or wants to do and um and and not not finding it yet so but that it's okay to not be academic it's okay not to be called scholarly right. you know, scholarly there are vital jobs out there 
and I'm going to get in a bit on soapbox. So I don't know, if Mike Rowe, if I say Mike Rowe's Dirty Jobs. You ever oh, see that? Show? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. yeah. So Mike Rowe, he goes out there and he does all what we call blue collar jobs. And he does some of the most disgusting things on television. Right. It's gross. The things they clean or have to take care of or dispose right. of or whatever. Um, but he and his foundation are offering scholarships to people who um, want to learn certain trades. We are in a decline for skilled craftspeople yes. and um, and what do you skilled workers mm-hmm. because the push for the last fifty years has been college, 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 yep. money, 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 white collar, white collar. Um, and so we don't have a lot of that. So if you're looking for skilled work and labor and things like that, there is a real need for it. And the pay is becoming pretty good for it. You don't right. have to spend tens of thousands of dollars on, um, on education to right. get a good job out there. And that's something do. that we push a <laughs> lot. We live yeah. in a county that is right outside of Washington, D.C. And that is, that is the vernacular. That is the, what college are you going to? Oh, he's not going to, you know, and there's, it. Yeah, 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 yeah. And we keep trying to, to push the, somebody said to me once and it really stuck with me. It's, it's when high school graduation is coming is up is the question that you ask. The polite question is, what are your plans after high school? Right. Right. Because not everybody is going to go to college. Some people are going to go to trade school. Some people go into the military. Some people, right. you know, they, I they take a gap a year, like whatever, yeah. you know? Yes, and, exactly. Yeah. And yeah, yeah. So that's a really a uh, good point. Um, oh shoot, I lost it. There was something that you're. I hate when I do that. About. I know. There's something you're talking um, let's about. See, skilled workers, Mike Rowe. Dirty yes, job. thank you. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so you're talking about uh, yeah, needing like tradespeople and stuff. So in my B and I chapter, right? Like we have an awesome electrician and a plumber, and they always need like people. To working for them right and there's not a lot of people out there and like the plumber I know has even been like look if you're just willing to learn and start training like I need someone that's reliable that wants to learn this yeah right and that's hard to find yeah so that you know it's like there's yeah I don't know it, it's um I feel like so many people talk about millennials or the young ones or whatever the next generation is called and how they don't know how to work and this and that but I think uh I don't know well a lot of them I think are sort of like I've heard that they're like disillusioned and stuff because they've seen us be like go to college and everything will be fine and then it's like oh cool we're in debt we can't do it like you know and I'm not even using my degree for what I'm doing. Like exactly, that kind of thing. exactly. Well, we've it's, talked about that. And I, I think the pendulum has swung one way and may possibly start be starting to swing back the other way. Um, we're also, you know, we've gone through a few years of telling kids and telling people, you can be a dreamer, dream it and it will come true. Yeah. Um, but, you know, go back a couple of generations and, people took the jobs that they had to take to be able to do what needed to be done, right. to take care of their families, their one son of this. Well, I'm not happy. And I, certainly we all want to be happy with what we're doing. Right. Um, if it's absolute misery and you can get out, then get out. But, you know, it's... I think you're right. Because it's it's along the lines of like, you know, if you do a job you love, you'll never work a day in your life. And right. it's kind of right. like, so if you're not working a job that you love, you're doing something wrong and you need to fix yes. it, right? Correct. Like that's Correct. the other side of that. But, but then were, who, they were yeah. unrealistic expectations. Right. Uh, but I want to be an actress, but I want to be a rock and roll star, right. but I want to, you know. It's, it's like, I, well, I then, to this many fine, people. Yeah, it's like, fine, if you want to go do that and try really hard, but like you said, if you have like a family or whatever that you're trying to care for, or just trying to take care of yourself, um, you know, it's really hard. And like, you know, we're talking about student loans. So the attorney I work for is a bankruptcy attorney, personal bankruptcies, and we see all kinds of things. And it's always, uh, it's like, you know, it's best described as like a game of Tetris. So it's like, you know, you're playing and everything's lining up great. It's going so great. And then like one block turns the wrong way. <laughs> and all of a sudden, 
you can't keep up and they're all piling up the Correct. wrong way. Right? Correct. Yes. Yes. So it's, it's that kind of thing where like one life event might screw up your finances and now it's like everything comes crashing down. Correct. Correct. And like student loans are one of those. Yes. Now I will say uh, in general, again, I'm not an attorney, so this doesn't count as like official legal advice, but like in general, student loan debt has never been something that can go away with your bankruptcy but like we know someone now I believe they're like out in Arizona but uh there's like attorneys that now there are ways actually like after your bankruptcy to get rid of some of your student debt okay, okay. so that's that's important but yeah but I mean just thinking like you know uh myself I'll, I'll throw myself under the bus right like I was living a dreamer life, which I don't like, there's nothing wrong. I learned lots and everything, but mm -hmm. I also was divorced, like, right, you know, divorced, single mom, didn't realize I didn't know what I was doing with my finances. And that, that's why I know the bankruptcy attorney is because I filed for bankruptcy in September of 2021. Mm -hmm. So it's like that it's like all those things piled on top of each other. And I just kept thinking like, you have to push the dream, right? Like you just have to do it and it'll be fine. Right. And so uh, you're right. It's like that dream when instead it's like, well, now I'm actually working a full-time job. <laughs> like, I'm sorry. My, my phone just cut. I, I hear you. I don't see you, but keep going. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. <laughs> but it's like, yes, you get a paycheck, but I'm sharing this also because part of my uh, goal is basically to destigmatize bankruptcy because right. for me, it was like, I didn't know anything about it. I just knew like, oh, well, you don't do it. Like, that's a bad word. Right. It's like, actually, like it's, it can be a great solution. And as uh, I've talked about with the oh, attorney. <laughs> I, I can't see you at all. That's I think right, I but you can still hear me. In. Keep going. So, yeah, yeah. So the attorney, it's like, you know, when I, I expressed like feeling bad that it got into a point with like credit cards and stuff. And I was like, well, it's just that I can't, I, it's like, I did, I feel kind of bad. Like, not that you should feel bad for American Express. Like, I think they're going to survive, but, right. <laughs> but it's like, uh, I feel bad because it is money I spent. Like, it's not like some kind of fraudulent charge I'm getting like relieved of. And so he explained, he's like, that's, I don't know, a healthy way to look at it or whatever, but also he's like, realize that this is how our, like bankruptcy is good for creditors because if if we were like some countries where there's just a debtor's prison, right? he's borrowing because they don't want to end up in debtor's prison. Right. So like creditors are making lots more money off of us. <laughs> like having the bankruptcy as an option because way more people are paying their bills and or paying the interest right like on the yes. interest on credit cards that whatever bankruptcies they get they're like man ah, whatever like we just made so much more money <laughs> like <laughs> so um so anyway so that's my little I got on my soapbox <laughs> <laughs> Well, you know, I, I took a job out of college that I, and I've told you I was an English degree and right. I went into a mortgage bank to work, but I was working in their customer service department and I got up to, you know, I eventually was um, the trainer for the customer service oh, department yeah. and um, finding through that, that how comfortable I was being up in front of people. Oh, yeah. Um, so, yeah, so all that, all that to say that sometimes you just have to take the job that's available. Um, and that's what we've been trying to tell my son too, is that, you know, take something, you don't know what doors it might open. You might right. find something that you really, really enjoy. Right. So um, that said, tying it back, cause I've got to, my, my son is sure, sure. Yeah, yeah. and has all kinds of, he's filling out forms and has no idea how to do this. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. That's so, fine. Um, but uh, yeah. So Harry's book, it's changed my perspective a great deal. Yeah. Um, on the two of them. Um, like I said, I, I do think that there's a genuine uh, relationship and affection there. And um, and I still go back to I, I, I hope they. Oh, wait, hold on. You sound OK. Go back. 
Your sound, yeah, your sound. Oh, okay. Now you're good. Okay. I was saying that I hope that they go to the coronation and that it opens the door to some reconciliation. Um, yeah, I, I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. We'll see what happens. But I agree. You I, are going to go. So you're going to go after that. We don't meet until what was it? Later May, early June. Yeah, at the end of at the end of May. End yeah, of May. So I can't wait to hear about your trip. Yes. Yeah. So exciting. <laughs> Okay, awesome. like processing the love hate thing. <laughs> I can't wait to hear about it. <laughs> what? I just oh, oh, I see what you're saying. Because what I said before, no, no, I, I really because you don't no, I know. Live there, because you yeah. don't live there. <laughs> I know, I know. It's just really funny. <laughs> it made me think of that. <laughs> Jealousy and only the positive, and only in the positive way. Absolutely. Right, right. Yeah. <laughs> That's funny. Yeah. But yeah, you know, if something excites you, don't, don't hesitate to reach out and send me okay. a picture or something, whatever. And, um, Absolutely. and anyway, so you, you enjoyed your teas. You recommend them? Yes, I recommend them. So everyone watching next time you're at Harrods, pick some up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Or you can order them online. That's how I got mine. <laughs> <laughs> might, be, might be you know might be a little bit easier that way so right, yeah they, right. these are very good I enjoy them I said they're very similar and um, they were a gift from my friend um but I do enjoy them and they're uh I, I usually go for, you and I are big on loose leaf um mm -hmm. mine is more of a bag tea yours look like they're still loose leaf but, right oh yeah I put it into bags yeah so it was loose yeah, yeah, yeah. very good mm -hmm. excellent yeah well so enjoy and wonderful. You know, don't right. be a stranger um I know that you're trying to pull a, a sampling together um yes my last text to you whenever you can if I can't make it I can't make it hopefully I can but um you know okay just get the and maybe there'll be started. another one that we do depending on how this one goes so sure. yeah so when you said the 14th did you mean this month as in yes, Friday? I did mean this month but you will be okay. gone as in the next week okay cool all right but you're not here the 14th yeah uh wait you mean of April or of May? Oh, April. Sorry. Sorry. I'm still. Okay. <laughs> no. All right. I know because that's what I first thought, but then I was like, wait, we're still in April. So is it April 14th? Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. It's, it's my hormones. <laughs> <laughs> I'm offended that you talked about your hormones in front of me. <laughs> it's not even baby brain. It's just hormones, honey. <laughs> that's great. <laughs> Yeah, that just it tied it all back up in a nice little. It pattern. did, yeah. That was a great sarcastic bow on top. <laughs> great callback. <laughs> all right, and well, listen. Enjoy your day. Enjoy your right, garden you. party. <laughs> all right, thank you. Yeah, all right, have then. fun having tea again. <laughs> thank you. I know, right? <laughs> all right, we'll see you all later. Right. Take care. Okay, Happy bye. Easter. <laughs>